Hey, it's me, Suited and Black, and I just wanted to make another casual video, like I did last year, on the best and worst books I read this year. This has been quite a successful year, like I talked about it, about in my um, best things that happened in 2021. And if you remember, one of the best things that happened was that I read 33 books. So it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy as I talk about the 15, actually 16, best and worst books I read this year. So like last year, the best list is in no particular order, there are also some honourable and dishonourable mentions, but like last year, the worst is in a particular order, so you know, from least trash to absolute shit. So why don't we jump straight into the video. Alright, so here are all the books I decided to put onto this list. So there's about, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, four. There's actually 14 books. So the first book I want to talk about, and actually I'm going to contradict what I said a bit earlier, and this is actually for me the best book of the year. So the best book goes to Mrs. Dalloway. Remember how I said that To the Lighthouse was a really good book last year? Well, Mrs. Dalloway is like the essential Virginia Woolf novel. This book is just really wonderful. It's truly a classic by Virginia Woolf. I love the themes of, you know, the middle the middle class. I think it's like after after the war and um, it's like I love the stream of consciousness, prose. You really get to understand the feelings of all the different characters and uh, just what kind of novel this is trying to do. So if you remember from last year, To the Lighthouse was a modernist piece of, you know, um, how people change and it's about the concept of suffering. This I feel like does that, but more on a slightly grander scale in a way. And uh, it's quite a short novel and it really shows that sometimes concise stuff can really be the best. So top place goes to Mrs. Dalloway. This book is great, I absolutely recommend it if you enjoy reading classics. So the second book that I want to talk about in the best list is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I don't care what you say, this book is really fun. This book was really enjoyable to read. I, like, I really liked reading about, you know, um, the um, Triwizard Tournament, the mystery surrounding it, and all the different challenges that Harry Potter had to face. And I think my favorite character in this book was just probably Hermione. She was just like, you know, the most level-headed and most, you know, you well, I don't want to say useful, but then like, I just liked her the most. I thought Ron was a bit annoying, a little bit like in the film, but other than that, this book was great, I really liked it, and I can't wait to read more Harry Potter. So the third book I want to talk about in the best of the year is American Psycho. Just like in my video for American Psycho, this book is so, so satirical about, you know, Americanism, and um, you know, the upper class, and masculinity, and it does that in a very interesting but also very macabre way you know where he you know he descends into violence overnight and those scenes are really grotesque to read but other than that this book i thought was really good i love it really just kind of hit the nail on um the, what i tried to set out and that you know to satirize you know american culture in a, a little bit so um yeah definitely read him definitely read american cycle if you want to read about, you know, satire, and, um, I suppose, yeah. I actually miscounted. There are actually 15 books in this pile. Well, one is like, wait, one is like a short story online, but the 14th book, that's the fourth best thing I read this year, was The Exorcist. Like, for some reason, I accidentally put this book away. It wasn't in my, um, red pile of 2021, but... This book is the thrill ride of the year. Just like I talked about in my video, this, and as a little bit of a reminder, this book absolutely sent me on a, on an anxiety roller coaster. Like, this book absolutely made my heart beat. It was like, I really was like, you know, anxious to read what happened in the story. And I think a lot of that is due to the atmosphere this book set, and a lot of it was because of the kind of relatability to some of the characters. 
and I feel like it did it really successfully. My only nitpick that, like I said in the video, was that I feel like this the prose is a little bit commercialized a little bit, and I feel like it's a bit, you know, not as nuanced as it should be. But other than that, The Exorcist is really good. It's definitely one of the more, I guess, controversial horror novels. Mostly, be also because you know it's influenced that the famous movie from 1973, I think. But yeah, if you love horror, definitely check out The Exorcist. It won't let you down. And the last book of the best of the year is The Ocean at the End of the Lane. This book is just really wonderful. It's got such a good imagi imaginative story, and I love how it's about, you know, um, as we grow up, our memories of our childhood start to become a bit more fragmented. Like, we don't quite fully remember the details of what happened, unless it's a very traumatic experience, because I've, I have that. I, I remember very, very clearly about some bad things that happened to me. But other than that, most of childhood is quite, not, you can't quite grasp it. And this book does such a good job of turning that into a fantasy. So it begins with, you know, the main character, um, he, um, he says he's visiting this, this person he used to know, and then, and then the rest of the novel is him remembering his childhood. And the unusual, fantastical things that occur is because it's that he doesn't fully remember what happened. And I definitely recommend this book to you because this book was really fun. It it really shows, like I said, it really shows if you edit your book, it can do wonders. <laughs> like, um, truly, edit your book, make sure it's really tight, really well written, and then you will absolutely get, you know, people loving it. I guess that's the feeling that just kind of came from this, but Neil Gaiman just wrote a, such a good book. Absolutely read it if you're into fantasy, if you're into about stories about childhood. And yes, it's a good book. And now time for some honourable mentions. So the first honourable mention goes to Autumn. So I kind of forgot to say, but quite a few of these books I actually read for university. So Autumn is one of those books I read for uni, and this was a good book. I really liked um, how it tackles this kind of topic of identity during Brexit, where, you know, having a passport is quite essential to stay in the UK. I thought this book just did it in a really fascinating, I thought it was a bit, um, stream of consciousness in a, in a, in a way, and, um, I, and I thought um, the prose was really digestible. You can easily read this book, and that's why I recommend this book to you. The second honourable mention is another university book called Wounded. This book is kind of like Brokeback Mountain a little bit because it's sort of a western and it does tackle a little bit of homosexuality, just a little bit. But it's mostly about just a soldier who's kind of had quite a rough life from what I remember. And uh, again, really digestible, it's short, it's just 200 pages, and it's interesting. I, I, if you want to be interested in a western, go with Wounded. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, and also, thank you for the university for recommending it to me. Third honorable mention is, some, is a book that was recommended to me by someone via Discord. And it's meant to be like a sort, and this is like a sort of an erotic horror novel, psychopath story, or sorry, serial killer story, and that's Exquisite Corpse. So I, I won't mention who said it, just so that, you know, they don't really want to um, maybe be revealed. But if, if they're watching, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for recommending this book to me. At first I was a bit, it's good, but, eh. But over time, I think it kind of grew on me, and I think I really like how it's it's horror, but it mixes, you know, erotic fiction into it, and I think that's really cool. And I like how it's about, you know, homosexual, you know, them predators and such, stuff like that. I thought that was quite fun and different. And the last book is mostly for fun, but I just had to give the Splatoon manga into the honorable mentions. <laughs> so, because, well, one, I really like Splatoon, but also Two, this book is just so wacky. Like, tell me, you, you, it just doesn't give you a, 
Tell me, like, it, it doesn't fail to give you a smile on your face from reading the pure silliness of the story. Like, this book just put me in such a good mood, I just had to put it in the honorable mentions, and I can't wait to read more Splatoon. <laughs> However, you know what time it is. It's time for the worst of the year. And, well, okay, here's the thing. I feel sorry that I have to put this book in the worst of the year because I know it's a classic. I know that we talked about this in university. It's another university book. And I know we talked about that it's a it's an idea of romanticism, you know, it compares um, the main character to nature, how it compares, you know, the sort of the feminine body to, you know, the natural, and how the man is trying to tame her. But I I, I cannot I cannot lie about how I felt about this book when I read when I read it. This book was dull to read. I it's not as bad as other books, but I cannot understate how dull this was to read. And that is Tess of the Durbervilles. I'm sorry, I just I didn't like it. I just did not like Tess of the Dur Durbervilles. I remember nothing from this book besides that she's compared to nature, but other than that, I remember literally nothing of this book. I was reading this book, and I hated reading it. It was one of the dullest books I ever I read this year, so... If you're into classics, I'm really sorry that I have to say this, but... It, it easily goes into worst of the year for me. And the next book, and I think, well, not the final book, but the next book that I also had to read for uni, I think is one of the... Unfortunately, this is the time waste of the year. This book kind of wasted my time in the end, and that's Bleeding Edge. I know, again, let me try to reason why I don't like this book. First off, let me just first of all talk about what this book is, a bit of context. So the author of this book, as we talked about in university, is really disconnected from society. They really don't know much, or at least they really, you know, or not interested or they're just kind of, you know, on the edge of society that they don't know too much about what's going on. So we talked about how um, this book is quite impressive, that he knows all these kind of different pop culture references, and yeah, but this book was just, again, a bit of a time waster because what was I ultimately reading? I don't mean to be negative, but what was the point of this book? Like, I remember reading, I was like, it's not too bad, but then it's towards, like, I think I DNF'd it from page 400 and something. And yeah, this is one of the DNFs of the year, but, um, that's like 400 pages of meandering, really. So I'm really sorry I have to put another university book in Worst of the Year, but. I just, I didn't like this book. So the third worst book of this year, and this is when we start to really get into the bad stuff, is a book that I did a review for the pre of the prequel of this book at the beginning of the year, I think. And I said that book wasn't too bad, but its sequel, this one, was worse. And it's worse than the original as well. And that's Eclipse. This book was sluggish as all hell. This book bored me to death, and the plot started 60 pages near the end. That was just... wow, I really didn't like this book. So I'm really sorry, I don't hate Twilight, again, I don't hate the series, but this book was just far too dull to read, far too dull for me to enjoy it at all. I don't mind the first person prose, the first person prose made it somewhat readable, but when I, when I arrived to the epilogue, I just skipped it. I was like, I, I can't be immersed with this anymore, so it didn't do enough for me. But I stuck with it, and this book was just... So, second to bottom place is yet another story I had to read for university. This is not a novel, but it's actually a short story. And I was led, when I picked it up, I thought it was going to be a horror story, but it was stupid. And it's called Ernestine and Kit. Like, if you like this story, good for you. Enjoy it. Good. But I hate this story. This story made me angry. 
I hated Ernestine and Kip. It's basically about two ladies who just are predators, I guess, and then they just hunt children and just, well, from what I understood, they literally leave them from this, at the side of the road and that's it. And it's like, what's the point? What is the point of the story? I know some people say it's satire, which I definitely think, yeah, it's more of a satire, but this is the mindset of me going into this thinking it was horror. And I think it does a horrid job of doing horror. It, like, it's truly horrible. Like, it's not scary. It's not tackling any ish um, themes. Well, I don't, I don't mean to say tropes, but any themes that made me on edge. Like, where was that? What was so scary? People would say there's this, this one sentence called the children played unguarded in the playground is scary and uncomfortable. And I thought, yeah, but does that actually lead up to anything? Does that actually make it scary from just one single sentence? It's like, no, you have to build the tension. You have to build the scare. You have to build all sorts of things. There's one sentence is not enough. This is almost like the sick rules. It, the sick rules is far worse, of course, but Ernestine and Kit was terrible, and I was tempted to put this at the bottom place. But there's one other story that went that made it to the bottom place. But thankfully, it's a story that I think everyone can agree on. So for bottom place, like, it's Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> like, of course it's gonna be in the bottom place. It's, it's that atrocious. It's that, you know, it makes you vomit blood. It makes you suffer. It makes you roll your eyes and cringe. What is the prose of this novel? What is the style of this novel? The style is shit. That's it, that's what it is. It's shit. This book is atrociously bad, but what I think makes it truly terrible is the fact that it literally leeches off another author's voice. It steals this person's voice, that being Stephanie Mayer's voice. It steals her voice and claims it as its own. That I think is disgusting. That is one of the worst things you could do in writing. Never ever steal another person's voice. You have to find your own. I was gonna make a video called Fifty Shades of Fan Fiction and Capitalism because that's what this book is. It's a fan fiction, and the person capital and the author capitalized off of it. It's a it's that disgusting. So I hate this book. And that specific reason is why I hate this book. Not necessarily just because it's a really badly written story and it's just laughable. But, oh, and about the laughability, the laughability lasted, lasted for a couple of pages and then the rest was just disgusting. So this makes it to the bottom place of 2021, right next to the sick rolls. <sighs> okay, and now for some dishonorable mentions now. So this book is another DNF and this book I think is the, this is the novel that made me feel the saddest this year because I had to put it down. It's called The Darkest Corners. I went into this book thinking it was like a psychological thriller, but it, it didn't do enough for me. I just, I just had to put it down. So I might try it again in another few years or something, but this was disappointing and that made me really, really sad. And the last dishonorable mention, the last book for this year is called Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. It's not bad, but it's kind of a blah story. It was kind of, eh, to be honest. I feel like, I like the mystery at the beginning, the kind of weird, creepy atmosphere, but then as soon as they start, you know, saying the word peculiar multiple times, it lost its novelty. It really lost its my interest, and I was like, ugh, generic fantasy. But... Again, if you want to read this, check it out, but 
I don't think it's the best book ever. And so, that was all 15 books of this year. Quite a few this time. Like, last year was like 8 or something. But this year, because I read quite a bit, there was a lot more content. Or a lot more things to talk about. And that'll do for this video, so thank you so much for watching. So, which of these books have you read, and what's your opinion on them? Do you agree with me, or do you have your own opinion? What do you think? Comment down below. So, subscribe for more content on books, movies, video games, and more. And here's to a nice new year for 2022. Let's hope that we read more books and have another successful year that doesn't involve, you know, viruses. And so, until we meet again, I'll be waiting in 2022.